Hello and welcome to Wall Street Training's Quick and Dirty Basic Leverage Buyout Modeling okay. Course. Q11 is our implied return, our internal re rate of return. We will use Excel's rate formula to calculate this. So we'll say equals rate open print. What is the time period, the number of periods that we have already moved past? This is the first time period, end of year one. So I want you to go up, control up our one twice, three times to Q5. Q5 is actually a number, the number one, which has been formatted with the text year in front of that. And uh, right after we're done this formula, I will show you how that works through our custom add-in macro toolbar under our formatting. But for now, let's just say Q5, that equals the number one, that's the number of years or time periods that have passed, comma, the payments. There are no payments in between. If you did have payments in between, you would have to use the RRR function. You cannot simply use the rate formula. So you would say no payments because we have not built in dividends. So comma zero, comma again, what's the present value? What is the present value? Well, that's simply the amount of cash that we put in. So negative, and I want you to go to E12 and hit F4 function key for me. What does E12 say? E12 is the amount of equity we put into the company. That's the present value as of end of year zero, beginning of year one, of our investment into this company. That's the present value. We're putting in that amount of money. What are we getting back in future value at the end of this first time period? So now you say comma and you go up to Q9. That is the amount of money we're getting back. I want you to hit enter. And now we're getting back a total of 13.9%. Not too bad actually for one year if you can flip it that quickly. That's our IRR. That's our return in after a one year time period. You'll see this number increase as we hold this longer because now we've paid down more debt. Of course, there will always be an inflection point, at which point the returns on the RRR need to match the capital requirement or the cost of the capital, and therefore, after it goes up, there will be an inflection point in which it will go down again. We'll talk a lot more about that in the complex LBO model as well. In Q12 now, I want to calculate my multiple of capital. Multiple of capital simply says, this is how much I put in, this is how much I took out, what is the multiple of that? That's good because you get an idea of the scale of how much you're getting back, but of course, this does not take into account time value of money because it's simply using your actual absolute dollars. So in Q12, let's go ahead and put this formula in there for our multiple of capital. You will say equals Q9, which is the amount of money I'm getting back, divided by simply how much money again have you put in? E12. F for that for me. And now in Q12, you should see the following formula. The total dollars of money I'm getting back, which is going to be Q9, divided by my initial injection of capital which is our E12, and of course you're going to negate it. Uh, sorry, you're not going to negate it, but you're going to hit enter, and you're going to get 1.1 times your capital back. Not all that impressive at this point, but that's only because one year has passed. So now what I want you to do is I'm going to quickly zoom out just a bit, take Q12 all the way up to Q7, and then you got it. You're going to shift right out to column U, year 5, control R. And now what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to check to make sure, ah, here we go, as I said before, actually I will talk about it now since the numbers appear this way. In S11, you'll see my IRR of 22.5, and then it starts declining. Why does this decline? Very simply, because your growth rates, your capital, your growth rate, your revenue, which boils down to equity, must continue growing at the same IRR or higher for this number to continue going up. But it's not, it's hard to maintain that 22% growth rate. So that's why it continues to go down. Again, there will be another inflection point where it simply would just maximize, but that will be many years out. Uh, not maximize, but flatten out. And again, your multiple capital is always going to increase, but this does not include the time value of money. Again, those IRRs will increase, and at some point there's an inflection point where those IRRs will actually start to decrease. So that's important to keep in mind. This actually wraps up our IRR analysis very quick and dirty. We've already at this point calculated our sources and uses of funds, our income statement, our debt suite, and our IRRs, our multiple of capital. Let's quickly calculate some credit ratios and then we're done. 